This is the Rise to Triumph podcast, and my name is Crystal Torres. I am on a mission to discover the key components of success of today's top TV and film industry professionals. If you are interested in becoming a working TV film professional or intrigued by the journey and are looking to surround yourself with the best industry minds, then this, my friends, is for you. Each week, we will have a chance to listen in on conversations that I have with top industry professionals and explore the behind the scenes of what it truly takes to rise to triumph. Hello, welcome to another episode of the Rise to Triumph podcast, and my name is Crystal Torres. Today, we are speaking with Marguerite Gennard, and, um, but first, uh, let's talk about last episode. Last episode, we spoke to Yvonne Sonant-Jones, and she talks about getting those first initial co-star credits. She talks about getting an agent, manager. She talks about just tips and stuff, like how she's gotten those to certain levels in her career, and um maintaining that for herself so that she can continue to rise up so today we're speaking with marguerite Gennard, and uh this episode we are speaking about the actor when you first are like oh i want to be an actor now what do i do and i don't know where that accent came from but uh yeah so we talk about just like the maneuvering, you know, the trying to figure out, oh, do I want to do training? Do I want to just get go on workshops and then try to see if I can try my luck and get an audition? And um, she talks about getting into the Master's RADA program, which is one of the most prestige programs in the entire world for actors. Um, it's extremely well known. Um, also, her experience at the William Esper Studio, which is another very prestigious um actor program um around the world so that's pretty much it she's just a very humble and she talks about her experience the auditions process and just taking that leap of faith and uh yeah that's that's pretty much it so it's a great conversation and i really hope you guys enjoy it peace when was your love for acting developed, I guess? Um, I think it was always in me. I know it sounds cliche, like somebody would say I always wanted to do it when I was younger. But uh, it started in me. I think it was, it was always in me. And then what really brought it to light and what really like it was like a light bulb was when I saw my brother in Amherst and he was doing, um, I think it was Cloud Tectonics, a uh-huh. uh, play that he was in. And at the end of the show, I you know, stood up and I clapped for him. And then all of a sudden, I remember thinking, oh, my goodness, this is exactly what I want to do for the rest of my life. Oh, my God. And it, <laughs> was and it like it, his performance or just like that? What was that feeling? What it was, was um, it was the fact that I, I, I. I know my I knew my brother for a little bit at that time we you know it was that that strange period where we're kind of building a relationship because before we were younger and always fighting and, <laughs> um you know we got older and he went away to college and I went to visit him because I knew he was in a play mm-hmm. and we just wanted to go support him yeah. and then the fact I think it was uh seeing him in a in a character and seeing the transformation and how that can you know how that can happen it was just like the fact that I didn't really recognize my my brother but I saw a character it was like he made like really good choices now looking back I can like describe what it exactly it was he made really good choices uh-huh. it was um it was it was great to see him in a in a world and it was a different world that he and, and character that he was able to bring out like a vulnerability in terms of you know uh, of creating a character and and being on stage and then it was really good. So like we all, you know, like the, the entire audience got up and they clapped and I was like, Oh my goodness, this is what I want to do. Like I want to mm. not be on stage and get the applause, but I want to be able to, to, to transform and to be able to relate to people through different characters and give them a voice. And even though he played a villain, the fact that he made great choices to have humanity in the villain, mm. I think that's what, that's what really stuck wow. out. Did you ever tell him that? <laughs> 
Um, I did. I always like. I always um, I, before before I realized what it was, I always said when I, when someone always asked me, oh, like what made you want to do acting? And I was like, oh, my brother did a play, and I want to do. You know, I so I noticed from that time that it was that's when I wanted to to be an actor. Mm. But recent, not, a little a little while ago, I realized that it wasn't because of you know his play that all of a sudden I wanted to do it. It was just that I I did want to do it all along. And I did love art and I did love, you know, performing. I just didn't realize that that was something that was achievable because it wasn't, you know, coming from an immigrant uh, family. Um, it wasn't something that was looked highly upon. You would always want to be a nurse or a doctor or something in a field right. that would give you great money. And so I, for some reason, it was something that clicked that was like, it was literally a light bulb that said, this is what I want to do. But looking back on my life, I realized that I was always kind of doing those things. I was always performing or I was always uh, doing dance classes or I did dance. I did dance classes. I did vocal lessons. I did piano and I did wow. all of these little extracurricular activities, but I didn't, I never had the support from my family saying, you know, go ahead, keep on doing it. It was just like something else that I wanted to do. And my, you know, my dad was able to allow me to do that. My mom, they were able to give me like, you know, a couple of voice lessons here and there and piano. And I just never kept up with it because they never said you can do this. It was just like, okay, well, you're doing it. Great. Yeah. You know, and that was it. Yeah. My yeah. mom, my mom had me in piano classes and it's one of those things. I don't, I don't like to use the word regret, but I'm always like, Oh, I wish I had continued it, you know, because like in that, in those moments, like I was just like, oh, piano class, like, you Mm -hmm. know, and then like the biggest thing my mom could ever tell me was like, oh, well, maybe, you know, you can do that as a side gig, you know, like teach people piano. And like, for me, I guess that wasn't, you know, enough of like a, but like, if I was like, oh, you could be an actor and then that can be Mm -hmm. a a skill, a really, you know, strong (laughs) skill set that you could put under your belt. And I would have been like, yeah, you know, and I feel Mm -hmm. like maybe I would have been more motivated. (laughs) Exactly. But my mom did push me, but I was just like, "Ah." now I'm looking back like, shoot, I need to take more classes now. (laughs) I feel that way too. I felt like if, I felt that if I had the support to say, keep on going with it, even if it's hard, because I realized that when I left those those classes when I left the piano class or when I left dance, um, I left dance because I, it was like the end of the semester and then we just did it re re enroll again. Yeah. Um, and it was great cause I, I was doing like, it was the, it was a sh- dance one-on-one or showcase, like showcase, uh, modern dance one-on-one I did Alexander and I did ballet and it was near Lincoln Center. And I didn't realize at that time what that meant. Yeah. Right? Like, it's like, you, yeah. Like, like what's the oh magnitude yeah, exactly. of Lincoln Center. Like, oh, exactly. no. <laughs> and it was, you know, and it was interesting. Like, it's interesting to look back and realize that, mm. you know, I did the research to find the class that I wanted to go to. My dad was like, yeah, you know, we'll help you, you know, just find out because they didn't speak English. So yeah. it was like, you know, we'll help you, you know, to the extent that we can find where you want to take classes. And, you know, and I did the research and I found that there was a class there and he was OK with it. And he, you know, they were like both my mom and my dad were supportive and like giving me extracurricular activities. Had I known or had it gotten a little bit more difficult with piano and voice, I would have known that, you know, you have to suck first before you become really great at something. Mm. But I never got that. And so yeah. it was just like once it became really difficult or once I didn't see any progress because I sounded so bad or I sounded horrible, I just stopped. I was like, well, it's not working. It's fine. <laughs> you know, that's funny. I never really thought about that, but I feel like I can totally relate, right? Because I'm just like, like, I felt like, oh, if I'm not good at this right away, it's probably not going to happen, you know? And, and it's true. It's like, yeah, but, you know, it's like, sometimes you just got to work harder at it, you know? It's not like, it's not tangible, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. But yeah, that's where it, it kind of it reignited my passion for, you know, performing is, mm. is what it yeah. So then where were you at that point? Were you like in high school, college? Or- uh, I was in college. I was in my um, I graduated from Bard High School, early college. And that gives you two years of associate's degree upon graduation. So I went into Brooklyn College with an associate. Oh, wait. So you were in high school with already enough credits to have an associate. Is that what you just said? Yeah. Oh, um, that's so awesome. The- I know that that school is really good. I would recommend it to anybody going to high school because, um, you know, we all, as we all know now, liberal arts degrees, you know, two year associate's degrees really gets you nowhere in the world. Even a bachelor's sometimes <laughs> nowadays gets you nowhere. So yeah, um, yeah, it's hard. I think it's great because um, at the time it was, um, 
I, I just wanted it to be able to go to school and kind of get out of school. I didn't mind going to classes and I wanted to learn what I wanted to learn, but because it was so, you know, stoic and like, you have to get these credits, you have to get these, do these classes. I just wanted to go mainly because, my, you know, my dad was like, you have to go to college. And I was like, fine. You know, <laughs> one of those things that your parents are telling you, you go to college. You're like, okay, okay. I'll just get, I'll get you the degree. That's fine. Let's just do yeah. it for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I left with the so I left with the associates, and then I got into Brooklyn College, and I basically would basically would have two years remaining to mm. do a bachelor's, uh-huh. and um, it and then it was probably like the the one of, in the end of the first year when I went to go visit my brother. So I was in college at that time. Never took an acting class. Never took a performance class. I knew when I left Bard though that I wanted to go to FIU and I wanted to major in dance which is in like these are all things that I remember and FIU is fashion yeah Institute? um no I'm um, Florida International University oh Florida in International. way off <laughs> <laughs> so it was like all of these things I'm remembering it's like all of these things are building up into or you know like little pieces of me that lets me know that, hey, I want him to be an artist. Hey, I want to, hey, you want to be an artist. Hey, you want to be a performer. Hey, you want to do something creative. Right, right. And so I there just, was things that kept pulling you towards it, but it wasn't exactly. because no one was saying that, hey, you can be an artist and do exactly. this as a career. And But you were just exactly. kind of like had all these little hints. Mm, exactly. And it was just going to, you know, FIU being a dance major would have been my, uh, uh, it would have been a minor. It wouldn't have even been a major. I was going to do major in health administration and then go to and then minor in dance. Mm. And um, yeah. And then I didn't go there. So then I went to Brooklyn College. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. And I saw my brother. And then and then I took an acting class. I mean, like the next semester because it was in the break, the winter break. Yeah. Um. Then I switched one of my classes and then I did. And I took acting one hundred and one. Oh, like wow. the next semester, yeah, and then from then on, it's been quite a journey. <laughs> <laughs> so you just like dabbled in it while you were in Brooklyn College. You just kind of like um, took an acting class or two, or or did you start taking? Did they offer a lot of classes? They did. They did theater shows. I remember. I remember seeing a, a show over there. I don't know what it was, but it wasn't really based on like they. They don't really have a. They have a really good film department, Brooklyn mm-hmm. College, um, but not acting the only thing I did take um I think that was create I think it was acting 101 but then I was so close to graduating that I was like I'm not gonna stay here for three more years to do it you know like <laughs> my mind was not at all and like I'm gonna stay here for three years get you know a major in a theater something I was like this is not what I'm doing with my life so I strategically thought in my mind I'm going to get my dad his degree because that's what he wants and I'm mm, going to go for acting that's that's impactful how you said that I'm gonna get my dad <laughs> his degree you know it's exactly. like that's, that's what this I is, felt this is the degree he wanted so yeah. let me just get it so that I could shut him up <laughs> exactly and literally when I graduated and I, we went to the graduation I got the you know the diploma you know the, you have the fake little one that you get on graduation day but yeah. then like the diploma came in and I didn't even open it I just handed it over to him I said wow. here you go this is yours um I'm doing my acting thing and it's um and since since I, after I took the and what was what was your dad's like was he okay? He's like, all right, well, at least you have your degree. So you have quote unquote, something to fall back on or. Um, it was, it was both mm-hmm. uh, because he would, he said, no, this is yours. You know, after I, I was like, no, really it's for you. Thanks. And I walked away and I gave it this. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, and then, you know, and then I said, I was doing the acting thing and he was um, a little, a little bit supportive. But I think he felt more comfortable knowing that if it didn't happen, it wouldn't matter because I had my degree in business management and finance. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't as something that like if I didn't make it or if nothing happened, it would be fine because, you know, I have a degree. That's fine. I can always go to a desk job with my degree. It's yes. not like it's something silly. So yeah. I think he supported, but I don't think that he thought that I was going to really go for it. Got it. So he was just like, oh, okay, it's just a phase. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, not just a phase. And I, I think my, you know, my mom as well was uh, similarly, similarly thinking the same thing because uh, though she loves art and she also back in Haiti, she said she did theater. Um, but moving to America, I think it became what happens, I feel, 
is when you come to America from a, a country where you're where you're not originally like where you're originally from, you you just think, you know, I just want my kids to be better off than I am. I want them to have a job. And yeah. so even you have even though you have these dreams and, you know, these uh, these wonders, or you think that your child can be something amazing in a different field. You just want security for them. That's, so I think for both. Yep. You know, my parents, that's what it was. It was like they just wanted security for their kids. They want to they wanted it to be, you know, safe for us. Yeah. In America. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the safest bet is obviously like health administration. Fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Makes sense. <laughs> Makes sense. So then you're like, okay, I'm going to do this acting thing. What does that acting thing entail? Yeah. <laughs> um, because then you're like, okay, I'm going to be an actor. Now exactly. what? <laughs> exactly. Um, I think thankfully an- another like big kudos to my brother. The first book he told me to read was a book called, Acting in audition, I I really don't remember what it was, but he gave me my first book, wow. um, to read for for acting, which is you know I think that's what's great about people going away to college. Mm. You see, like he had he stayed here or had he not gone, who like he probably wouldn't have you know thought of that, or I mean it probably would have happened, but maybe like a longer time or a longer time span because he was away on campus, he was able to experience all these things, find out new things realize his love for writing, realize that there can be, you know, a career or like a, a segue to whatever you want to do. Yeah. Other careers, period. Yeah. You know, if you're if you're if you're in a situation or you're in a neighborhood or in an area where people don't go away to college and you want to do certain things with your life and nobody supports you with it mm. and it's you don't really see people your kind, you know, people from your neighborhood, you know, your color or your your, your gender doing other things beyond being a nurse, being a doctor, being a lawyer, um, which these, you know, careers are all great and they're fine and they're fantastic and useful as well. But if you don't see people being creatives that are like you, then you don't think of it. You don't think that that's a possibility. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, hey, I, I I appreciate him. I appreciate them letting him go away to college, yeah. you know, and not stopping him, which is really good for me. Yeah, I'll turn. <laughs> In turn. <laughs> um, so then you, you read this book and did you just like start auditioning or like, what was that? No, it was a book. Oh, I forgot the name of it. I'm trying to. I tried to find it, but I couldn't. But it was like something <laughs> called okay. like the actor and auditioning in me or whatever. And it mentioned. It basically told you, okay, you want to be an actor, so what? Like now, what? Basically, mm-hmm. let's see what the steps to take are. You know, do auditions. Basically, it said to do your research to see what what um what classes to take or where to take classes, um and that you don't really you don't really have to have a degree in theater to do to be an actor you can take like vocational classes you can take conservatory classes is what it is conservatory classes um like esper studio or you know tvi studios like these classes that offer scene study monologue you know prep uh seminars with casting directors and agents blah 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 so in that book it mentioned tvi studios and um and so I looked it up and I was like, okay, well, let's see what TVI Studios is all about. And that was like a, uh, it wasn't a conservatory, but it was a studio that had all these classes and it prepped you for auditions. It prepped you for, uh, uh, for like, it did seminars as well with casting directors, blah, blah, blah. So all in, in short, I Googled TVI Studios. I was like, okay, I'll do TVI Studios. So <laughs> I <laughs> went in and um, I signed up. I think I did a, couple of a month member a couple of months membership or something or a year membership where I was able to take classes while I was in college finishing off the, the bachelor's degree oh okay so you were still in college too but you were just yeah. doing this outside of that exactly That's yeah cool. um and so all like my little all like the 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 little money that I had at NYU that I was making at NYU working you know went towards that because nobody was gonna fund that but me yeah so. yeah so um they're like if that's something you want to do you got to do it on your own <laughs> yeah exactly so you know like I worked and then I you know I went to those classes uh like the seminar classes the monologue classes and the scene study classes and then I did like headshots because that was like you know acting 101 you go there and they tell you what to do and they tell you how to go about it so my first step was reading the book researching and then I did TVI studios um got it. yeah now looking yeah. back do you feel like that was like 
like a good place to start or like I think it was. I think reading is a good place to start and researching is a really good place to start for an actor, whatever point in your career that you're in. Mm -hmm. Um, Because you need to know what, you know, like people can tell you things, but you also need to be aware. Like I can sit down and talk to someone for hours about like what happened to me and how I got to still, you know, still continuing to, uh, you know, pursuing acting and making it a career and not just a hobby. But yeah. at the same time, I can't help you because like you may not you're not in the situation that I'm in. Maybe you have a little bit more money or maybe you have less money and you have to find out what works for you in your circumstance. If you don't research, if you don't Google, you know, if you you know, now now we have even more things. And I feel horrible for like I feel like I'm talking and speaking like all these already well-known actors who are saying, you know, don't. Uh, don't give up. You have all these things to make your own work. YouTube, blah, blah, blah. And I don't like when they say that because it's like you're not in the same situation. So you're I right. <laughs> I totally, you know, I saw <laughs> I saw a clip of, uh, there was like an interview and, and uh, it was of Emma Stone. And they were like, oh, you know, I mean, she's, I guess, 13 years. And she's been doing this and she was like super young, you know. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, but I see a lot of people doing like, you know, doing their own webisodes and stuff like that. And I'm just like, you just like, you're, you know, and so I get it, you know, like her, it's great that, you know, I mean, I guess she's just trying to find an answer that hopefully can relate to people, but. Exactly. But, 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 you, but then as a, as an actor trying to pursue acting, yes. you're trying to not, not even pursue it. Cause I think we also, as actors need to, once you realize you're at a certain point, you need to stop saying I'm pursuing this as a career because this is your career. It's just that you're working towards a next goal. Yes. So yeah. The I, fact that like, uh-huh. do you think, I think that, what do you think? I think that that's a good way of putting it because if no, you see, I, like, I, I think you're spot it. on. I think I remember someone saying like pursuing, it's basically like saying chasing. So if you're always mm-hmm. chasing something, you're never actually like, acting on it you know it's like these are the you know like yes this is you know where I'm at now and what I'm doing and Mm -hmm. and it's easy for me to you know like sometimes oh I'm pursuing this but it's just like that's not the truth you know it's like this is my career and these are the steps (laughs) that I'm taking to move forward and it's like I think I think owning that you know and and do you remember I mean I'm moving ahead a little bit but we could jump around Mm -hmm. um I remember in Esper, we both went to William Esper Studio in Manhattan, uh, a conservatory Fantastic. studio. Huh? Fantastic studio. Yes. And, um, but I remember them, you know, just really kind of like looking down upon, I don't know, I guess the fact of like actually working on your career outside of being in class. Training. Yeah, outside yeah. of training. I yeah. mean, initially. I, I don't I, I think that initially they did say they said, hey, if you're going to do this, you know, you're going to train, um, you know, we don't they, they don't suggest to audition while you're training. Yeah. Which um, at, I have to I have to say, honestly, at first when I was there, I was like, fine. What, you know, when I first got in, I was like, great, fine, whatever. Does it doesn't really matter? it didn't really cross my mind that I should be like, I didn't think that I should be auditioning while I'm training because I wanted to learn so much about the craft and be able to kind of, you know, like we both wanted to master it. We want to master the craft of acting. We don't just want to be lucky actors. We want to be able to be skillful actors. Mm. So um, at the time I didn't think it was a bad thing of, you know, not auditioning. Um, if you, if basically, if you don't have an agent, it's like, if you don't have an agent or if you don't have somebody working for you, there's no, you, you shouldn't pursue it while you're training. And I actually think that's a really, really smart thing to do and smart things to say, because, um, training is definitely something that you have to focus on. If you don't focus on it, then you might as well not do it. Then you're not ready to, to train and to be in a, you know, in a certain level. Like if I were to be I did like few auditions, but I didn't, you know, I did maybe like little short film auditions just to get, you know, screen time or something. Or and try some to theater, see how right? Didn't you do like yeah. some theater plays or something? Yeah, I did that because that was because it was second year. It wasn't the first. It wasn't in the first year. Mm-hmm. It was um, second year. And then like um, I produced the play that we did. Mm-hmm. But um, it was I did it because I wanted to experience and I, I want to experiment with what I've been learning and I felt really, con- I felt really at that point in second year, it was like around January, February, I felt really connected to myself 
Mm. and my vulnerability and my emotions and being able to uh, show that. And I wanted to experience and have it on stage because I loved the that I wanted to work on. It was Marsha Norman's Night Mother, but we didn't end up doing that. Uh-huh. Um, and it was like, you know, with two characters, me and another character. Um, but that didn't happen. But we did meet, which was like, and it happened towards the summer. So that was also after. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was already the towards the end where you were already exactly, wrapping yeah. up the whole yeah, two-year I, program that you had taken. Yeah, but I do agree with not auditioning while training. If you have an agent, you know what I mean? Of course, your agent is not going to, you know, you can either choose to say, hey, I'm going to study for two years. Do not submit me for anything. I want to be 10 times better before I go in. Um, or you can, you know, if you feel confident enough, if you've done it before, if you, you know, you train somewhere else before and, you know, the school that you're going to afterwards, uh, you know, says don't audition and you have an agent, I, I, I've never been in that situation, but I feel that it wouldn't be bad if you were to audition, but I yeah. do understand why they said not to do it because you are learning so much and it can set you back. It can bring you back to old habits that you've had that mm-hmm. you haven't yet break, broken down. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with it. I think for me personally, you know, I felt like I, I didn't know anything, you know, I've never really like auditioned or anything. So for me in that point, and I think it goes back to like what you're saying, you have to find what works best for you in your situation. And some people, yeah, they've already been seasoned. So, you know, it's like, they're just kind of going back and like training, you know, just, just to get more under their belt. But I guess, um, but I do feel like, I'm happy that for me personally, like I, I kind of just like focused on my training because it was just very intense in itself, you know, just like yeah. trying to just like, and then, I mean, like the process of training as like understanding you as the actor, I feel like you're trying to understand yourself, you know, you're trying exactly. to understand like what, what is it that what are your tools in the box? What are the emotions? What are the things that really click for you? So yeah, it's it's definitely a very sensitive point. Yeah, and, it, yeah, it is. I it, I agree with you one hundred and ten percent. It's it's it is the most sensitive point in your life in general. Whether you choose to become an actor after you train as an actor, especially at a really you know at a we went to a prestigious school in New York City. A lot of people don't get in. A lot of people don't have the opportunity to get in or their goals and their focuses are on, you know, fame as opposed to learning the craft and learning, you know, uh, just the, the, the being a skill in terms of being a skillful actor. Yeah. So what was, it, what, you have to be, what brought open you, to it. sorry, <laughs> go ahead. No, it's okay. Please. <laughs> no, what, what brought you to, um, Esper, you know, and like, at what point did you feel like, okay, I want to, immerse myself in this intensive acting program um it was in a scene study class uh, at tvi studios with i forgot his name i think his name was brett something but he ended up being on blue buds um he was our model our scene study teacher at Mm. tvi studios and he mentioned, you know, he was working with us. And this is, you know, this is when I had no training at all. I didn't even understand, like, what would have been. The, I didn't even know conservatories existed. I didn't know what was going to happen. Got I thought it. I'm going to take all these TVI classes until I feel comfortable enough to go into an audition. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I was doing auditions as well, but I still didn't feel confident going. And I was very nervous. Um, but I was still going for it. Um, and then he mentioned, there was we were doing a scene. Um, I wasn't on stage, but somebody else was um doing a scene. And then he said, you know what, guys, um, if you really want to take this acting thing seriously, he's like, you have to train, you have to go. He's like, TVI is great. All these classes are great. You know, these little like six week classes, they're great for you. But if you really want to be an actor, if you really want to be taken seriously, you have to train and you have to get like a method um, under your belt or at least experiment with a couple of, you know, different methods. He's like either do Meisner training or you do like, um, you do go to the actor studio and you you do the method. And then he mentioned that he went to, I think he mentioned he went to William Esper studio, Mm -hmm. I think, or he might, or either that he went or he just mentioned it. No, he mentioned the Meisner technique. I apologize. He uh, mentioned he, that he studied in the Meisner technique at his university. And then, you know, he came to New York and he did all this acting stuff. And so he was a working actor teaching us how to do scene study. Huh. 
And so, I know. <laughs> and so um, because he mentioned it, I said, okay, well, then I went home and I Googled acting techniques. <laughs> Uh huh. And, um, and then it said, you know, Meisner technique. And I Googled Meisner because he said it. He mentioned it. And then he, you know, then I Googled about the method. Um, and then I said, OK, well, I I was ge- gearing more towards the Meisner technique. And um, and then I Googled like top Meisner schools in New York City. Um and then I read, and then, you know, Esper, the Esper studio came up and a few other studios came up as well. But I, in my mind, I was like, I want to work with the person who worked with Sandy Meisner. That's mm-hmm. what I want to do. Um, if I'm going to go train. And so, you know, Bill, I think at the, I don't know if he's still the only one or if, I, if there are others that trained under, my, under Sandy. Um, maybe Suzanne did. His wife. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, like in terms of like others, I don't know, like, you know, Maggie Oh, Flanagan. yes. Yes. I was looking I at that studio as the, well. Uh huh. Yeah. I think she has one as well. And she was in the neighborhood playhouse. And that's what I found about the neighborhood playhouse. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so it was either the neighborhood playhouse or the William Esper studio for me. And I, uh, you know, I applied for one and I applied for like the Esper studio. I, I took, um, this was like in fe- like a February of whatever year that we had the summer intensive. <laughs> yeah. So um, that was like 2011. Like 2011. So yeah. I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go. I'm going to try to get into the studio. I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, so I found basically found the training because he mentioned that if you want to be a serious actor and if you want to be taken seriously, you have to train. Yeah. And. Then I Googled and of course, Googling led me to the William Esper studio. And I read the book because I think in the, also, I think at the time it said, uh, you have to read the book before your interview. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. So then I read the book and I was like, I was even more taken aback from it. I, I was just like more like in love and enamored with it. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is exactly what I want to do. I don't really want to relive any, any, you know, any situations in my life to be able to use that for acting. I think that's dangerous, but I also can see how beneficial it is for some people and that's fine. And that's other people's, you know, choice. But for me, I don't want to relive certain things in my life. I just want to be able to create it. And I think that's a safer. Got it. And um, that's, and that's you deciding on like different techniques because the method technique is based off of like living through past experiences exactly exactly yeah and you're really like and then meisner technique you explain it (laughs) yeah meisner technique is about um you know creating your or living truthfully under an an imaginary circumstance which is really about using your imagination it's about being a kid again and being able to you know when you as a kid you had an imaginary friend and that friend was very real to you yeah. And um, that is basically what it is. It's about having really real situations that you imagine exercising that muscle mm-hmm. in you that is still in you. But it's just, you know, it just weaned off and it's just a little bit weak because, you know, we deal with life and situations. Yeah. Um, but I think that's that I think that's what's best and better for it's healthy, I think. Yeah. And what I like about it is because, I mean, even though it's imaginary situations, at least, um what you're doing is you're creating a real, you're crafting a real scenario in your mind that you, you know, that you can actually truly believe in. Right. Mm -hmm. So that you can basically trick yourself into feeling like living that out. Right. Exactly. So, I mean, yeah. So I I found that to be cool because then you can really see like, you know, if you use like your mom in this extreme situation that, you know, you've never actually experienced, but because you, the love that you have for your mom or your, whoever, you mm-hmm. know, that's really important in your life. It just kind of like, it makes that situation feel so real because there's such a love connection or exactly. whatever the, you know, whatever it is for you or a hate, you know, an anger mm-hmm. or something. But, um, yeah, I, I found that, I found that also. Is that what brought you as well to like to, to the Meisner? Yeah, totally. Yeah. For me, uh, yeah, for me, that was, um, I for me it was like the whole I just had graduated college and I wanted to or I was about to graduate and I was like I really want to do acting <laughs> and I was just like <laughs> what do I do and mm-hmm. for me I guess 
it just kind of like I just started doing research like if you want to be an actor what do you do you know and then I personally I saw like a lot of articles at that time that said you know if you are really serious about being an actor and having a career of longevity Mm -hmm. um, you want to have a strong foundation and in order to do so you should um, train and you should find a good place that you feel like you will get the most, you know, training mm-hmm. for your experience. And and then, then, I don't know, I think I saw a few of the techniques just like you. And, um, yeah, and then I, I came across Meisner. I saw William Esper. I had a – actually, I had an interview for the William Esper and for the Maggie Flanagan Studios. You but, did. Yeah, but I didn't um, – and I knew someone that was actually going to the Maggie Flanagan. Um, they were like just starting to, they were like me where they went to college. And then after that, we're like, Hey, let's, I want to do acting. So then, yeah. But for me, I, I, I went to the Esper studio and, you know, it's just like a feeling, you know, like right. I went there and I interviewed with Lathe and I remember being late. <laughs> <laughs> you were late? I was like so five nice or 10 minutes late. late and Lathe was like, Goodness. I remember he was eating a bagel and he was just like, <laughs> Well, now that you're late, you're not to wait. <laughs> I was like, oops. Oh, my goodness. So I'm I just so sat angry. there like a little little puppy, like, oh, <laughs> no, this isn't a good start. <laughs> yeah. That was not a good start, Crystal. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I have to tell you. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, and then, yeah. And then, you know, then there was like the interview process, which is more like mm-hmm. a, not like an interview. It's more like kind of like a get to know you I felt like you know and I guess to see where you are in your acting career so I guess then they would know where to place you I guess you know what teacher um right yeah but but yeah so and then I did the six-week program which is where we met because for me personally I was just like I still wasn't convinced that I was gonna like do this that just came out of four years of college I'm like oh I'm gonna go back to school I don't want to go back to school. I just finished like four <laughs> years. Like, uh, you know, like I'll see how this six week um, Esper. And I think a lot of like these intensive programs do like a six week kind of, a, you know, it's kind of like a intensive. sampler. Yeah. yeah you like, you know, you can dip your toe. And if you don't like it, you didn't spend too much money and you didn't, um, you know, waste that much time. At least it was just like a summer. Okay. And, and- and it shows you and it shows you as a person and as an actor, as as a person in general, like if this will work for you, like if this is something you want to do or if this th- is this method will work for you. I agree. Yeah, because there are some people that realize, no, it's not really it's not really what I want to do after six weeks, which is, you know, good. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, it, exactly. On, so it's not going to work for you. Yeah, exactly. You're not like you know, in the middle of like a, a year, two year program. And then you're like, what did I get myself into? Which can happen. <laughs> that exactly. can happen too. But I mean, it's better to at least if you're still like on the, you know, trying to figure it out. So yeah, because at that point, I was like, no way, I'm going to do a two year program. I'm just going to see what this is about. And, and by the end of the six weeks, I was for me personally, I was sold. I was like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. You know, I was like, Oh my yes. God. Like, yes. I, I never felt so much more like I belonged. Mm-hmm. And then in that moment, you know, and it was just like, and then, you know, then you're like, okay, I guess this is, this is, <laughs> this is it. <laughs> this is what I'm doing. <laughs> Holy crap. Now two years I'm going to sign yeah. up, you know? And it's just like, but it was just exciting. Cause you're just like, <gasps> yay look at me doing something that's not you know i guess well, it's like, not con- conventional for the rest of the world quote quote unquote conventional exactly mm-hmm. it's totally uh, like yeah especially i think we both kind of i mean not the same but like my you know my parents are very traditional as well and they, you know just kind of like oh okay you know what it's a good hobby yeah <laughs> why <laughs> i thought you were gonna work you know for uh, you know, like some big company and, you know, mm-hmm. have a nice office job. And, you know, and, and that just wasn't <laughs> something for me that appealed, you know, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe I would be better off financially right now. But <laughs> <laughs> I know sometimes I also think about like where I legit thought 
like at 25, I was going to be working <laughs> at <laughs> working at Bergdorf Goodman as head of buying um, and being able to travel the world because I'd have to travel the world to see what the new styles and have an assistant. <laughs> I would have an apartment. I would have a car and I would throw dinner parties every week or every <laughs> two weeks on the weekends for my friends. This is what I thought my life was going to be at 25 when I was yeah. like 20. And then I wanted to be an actor. And clearly that is not exactly what happened. Yeah. <laughs> no, no financially stable, still working hard. Yeah. Yeah. What what is it about um you know I was thinking um as far as like you know like I guess you know you chose like you know to not really like audition just focus on your training I was thinking <clears throat> sorry I was thinking um like now um maybe one of the things that I probably would have done was mm-hmm. maybe do some background work while I was um training like at school I don't know because I think even though it's like background work I feel like you're able to be on set and that's the closest you know if not you know getting hired as a principal it's like the closest you are to um seeing like what you're working towards you know because it's like I don't know I think there's part of this um where you're in school and mm-hmm. training is great, but at the same time, there's like, I don't know, it's still like a safety net, you know? Mm-hmm. And you're just like, oh, it's all about the artist and all about the beauty and, right. you know, the creativity. And then, you know, but like the reality is that if you're trying to get in and make money as an mm-hmm. actor, it's mm-hmm. a business, you know? Right. And I think yeah. you need to see what that business looks like because I feel like people get turned off it's like you have to, you know I mean like if you do theater it's different obviously but mm-hmm. if you want to be in front of the tv or film you know it's like you're doing like a two-page scene dialogue um you know for the camera and you have to do like 10 different angles a close-up mm-hmm. a medium shot you know like exactly. and I yeah yeah go ahead <laughs> I think um I think I think you're I think you're right um uh, I think you're right to some extent to some extent because the the background is is good because you'll get the experience of being on set you learn the lingo like you said um however it's just such a long day that i don't Mm. that if you're if you if if you are all set and you know you have nothing to worry about you have no you know no problems with paying you're you're not really work you're not working at all you're just really going to the concert like to training to train yeah i think you can do background work um, mm-hmm. You know, once in a blue, because you'll, you know, on a weekend or a Saturday or something, but the, because the days are so, are so scattered. That's so if true. If you're part time, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have time. Like it would just be like, you'd be really tired and something would have to give way. Yeah. And it's either you're going to, you know, and what would probably give way is the amount of work that you put in to work on that scene or, you know, to craft something that's really detailed. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that too. You know, it's just like maybe just like just dabble in it just to like kind of because I think, well, at least for me personally, like Mm -hmm. I didn't really understand that until afterwards, you know, and it was just kind of like like a journey of like, oh, this is how, you know, it is to be on set, you know, and then it's just Mm -hmm. like not getting like too excited because you don't want to look too green or something. (laughs) (laughs) Ooh, look at me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but but um but yeah i think i think it's good at least yeah maybe not to like do it like all the time but at least to do it like once in a blue and i, I think it humbles you too because yeah. then you're like oh wow that's a lot of work you know <laughs> exactly i think i think it, it would it's pretty it's it's a great experience to do background i know it's like looked down it's frowned upon you know but um sometimes you just have to you have to submerse yourself in the field that you're in and submersing yourself is being, you know, part of the background or being part of the crew. You don't have to be background. You can be production. You can be yeah. a runner. You That's know, you true. can do all these things. Um, but if you also don't submerse yourself in it, even if it's for just a little bit, you kind of, you don't really get it. It takes a, 
an army to make a film or a TV show or an episodic. Or yeah. Whatever. And that's, and then for me, that was a big thing that I learned too. Cause it's just like when you're on set, it's just like, it's different when you're in acting class and you're just mm-hmm. like, Oh, okay. Like, Oh, it's about me and my scene. And you know, it's like, I remember getting like nervous, like, Oh, what if my emotion doesn't come through, <laughs> you know? And it's like worrying about these little things, but it's like, if you it, it, like, when you aren't are on set, you know, it's mm-hmm. like, you you don't have time for that. You know, it's like no one's gonna be like, let's let her get in her zone. You know, it's like you have like the camera crew, the grip, you know, the director, the cinematographer, like, all right, everybody ready? You know, the bell goes off, action. And if you're not ready, mm-hmm. then it's like how what you know, then they can fire you. Like, yeah, it's and a job. And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I think and I think for me, I guess that's I guess that was the big takeaway, like, when I was doing, like, background and stuff like that. It's just, like, the fact that it's just, like, everyone has to pull their weight and you're there because you were hired to do a job, you know? And it's, like, uh, sometimes I feel like, at least, you know, you can totally tell me, like, because this might be just my own personal perspective. But, you know, it's just, like, oh, like, being an actor, like, when I was in in classes, you know, oh, it's so sacred in this art. And, of course, but it's, like, at the same time, it's just, like, there has to be, like, I almost feel like a balance between, like, you understand and you're appreciating, you're, like, working hard on your craft. But Mm -hmm. at the same time, you have to be able to, like, really switch to that business, like, all right, I'm here to do a job, you know? You yeah. got your lines down, you got this, you you went through the scene, you know your beats, and mm-hmm. then and then you got to just be ready to go. And yeah. you know, it's just like you can't you can't hesitate with that, you know, because yeah, they'll fire you. Next. I, exactly. <laughs> I agree with you. It's just like it has to be a switch and and that and I think that's I think that is what is missing in trainings. Um mm. it's the fact it's the the transition between um, the sacred place of being an artist and developing your craft into the professional world of it being a business. And I'm sure may- maybe um, uh, there are a few studios who do that or, you know, a few colleges or, or yeah, maybe if you go to NYU or that. Yale. <laughs> yeah, they might, you know, like they might have, uh, you know, like other things that bring you to experience being on set or like uh, or doing a full production of something. Yeah. But um, I think that that's what's missing. Even in conservatories, I can't, I mean, it's definitely a certain amount of money and it's a certain amount of investment. And it probably is because that that's not something that, you know, can be affordable to either the, the space or the company and also like the individual. But I think that's what's missing. It's like after you train for two years, maybe there can be three months where, you know, you're creating projects within that group of people yeah. that you've met within the last two two or three years, depending on what you've done. Or And then you have, you know, people come in from different, um, you know, casting directors or you have showcases because they have showcases. Even if it's a conservatory and it's not a university, that doesn't mean that, you know, the people who are in the conservatories aren't as serious as people who have degrees you know, totally, yeah. It's just like the sort. exposure from between and after. And yeah. I think, I think, um, since we uh graduated at Esper, which was only a few years ago, but I feel like I've seen things where now they do like different workshops and stuff like that with right. casting. So I mean, maybe, maybe they they're catching on, but but yeah, I think it's it's definitely important to have that balance. Mm-hmm. Now you. After, you know, college and then finishing this two-year conservatory program or while you were in the process of completing it at Esper, mm-hmm. you wanted to go to more school. Why? No, no. <laughs> because I didn't feel ready. I didn't feel ready. I did some auditions and I still didn't feel confident and comfortable um, doing uh, in in the room and also performing. I mm-hmm. still felt very nervous and I noticed that in myself. And so I was like, I don't have experience in performing in front of people. And that's what I need. Mm-hmm. I don't need, you know, I have the training. Great. I know how to get into my emotions. I know what can trigger me. I know what words can trigger me. I know how to craft something. I know how to craft, you know, an entrance. I know how to craft an exit. I know how to craft uh, the actions that are going on in the scene. I get it. I can do that. You know, and I can still use more of it till this day. I can still use more of it. But I, at the time, I didn't know 
how I didn't have experience in performing. And so I felt like that's mm. where I'm lacking. And how am I supposed to be really good or really great or helpful to other people, which is, you know, what I, why I want to be an actress, to be able to give voice to people who feel like they don't have a voice and to make people feel not alone. How can I do that if I freeze up all the time where people notice that I'm nervous on stage or behind the camera? Mm-hmm. And so I said, I have to find out, you know, find a program or find something that allows me to um, have that experience. And I also wanted to, to learn more about the world that I'm going into. I wanted to learn more about, you know, uh, even though I do want to do film and TV, but I, I wanted to learn more about theater and like the background and the history of it, mm. because how am I supposed to talk to people who are in the industry without not having any knowledge of it? Yeah. How can I have a conversation? Like I can't watch TV all the time. And that takes away from you. Like you have to do research when, you know, when you get auditions and things of that sort, but I can't watch every good TV show that comes on because that will take up 48 hours yeah. <laughs> every single episode, you know? And then like, then when do you really have time to study? So I have to, you know, I felt like I had to learn more about the background, the history of the theater, the history of acting, the history of the arts. And then I wanted to get experience. So those are like my main, like three or four things that I wanted to do after the Aspen studio. Got it. And so you felt like you can find that through the RADA program. Um, I did, I, well, I Googled again, <laughs> <laughs> Google. my whole life is Googling. Yeah, I um, think everyone's but, is. <laughs> right. Um, so I Googled, um, I said, I want to, I want to be, I wanted to be able to get that experience. So my next step was what am I going to do to get that? Mm. And it was, you know, I wanted, I had to, I had to find something. I said, I don't want to go to school anymore. I've done that for two years. That was a time of me not auditioning and not being out there. So what am I going to do? Am I really going to, I had to like a conversation like with myself, like, am I going to stay for two, three out, you know, two, three, two, three years, um, not working again. That's insane. How are people going to know me? Blah, blah, blah. Um, but eventually after I had that conversation, I thought to myself, okay, I wouldn't mind going back to school, but if I'm going to school, I have to go for a master's because I'm not going to do three years of a, of a degree for no reason. And then I, then it narrowed it down to me in ter- in terms of, um, what, how long I would want to be out of mm. work. And it was, I said, I'm not going to go. I would probably, if I can find something for one year, that's great. If I can find something for two years, that's pushing it. But if it's worth it, I know that it will be worth it. Mm -hmm. And so then I Googled and then I, you know, I was looking into like Harvard. I was looking into Yale and I was looking for a master's degree because I couldn't, there was no other way. I think also financially, I wouldn't be able to, to support myself in going to a conservatory for, you know, like without without it being school. Yeah. Um, so I had to, I had to like apply to school. And so I was looking for master's programs. And then I I ran into the Harvard and the Yale one. And I also wanted to travel. I wanted to learn, um, about, I wanted to be able to study abroad, not Mm -hmm. abroad, but I wanted to study in Europe because I want to, I wanted to be an international and I want to be an international actress. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, so I had to, you know, of course, find out about European theater and and the the world over there. And so I was looking into programs that either had the option that during the program you would travel abroad or, um, you would already, you would be there for the entire time that you're studying. And, um, and I, I, I fell into Harvard, Yale and RADA. And and then I Googled, of course, top top 10 drama schools. <laughs> so, um, and you know, and it fell, it was between those, it was between those three for me. And then I didn't really know what to do. Um, and I think I immediately cut one out because it was three years. I don't remember which one. Mm-hmm. And then it was between the Rada and one other. And, the I think it was between, I don't, re- I really don't remember which one it was for the master's program that allowed you the second year you would travel to to Europe and you would work there you would like um you would uh, learn more about the European theater world Shakespeare and classical works um in in England or in Europe um and um 
And then I don't, and then I don't know. And then I was like, well, I don't really want to spend two years there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to spend two years not working. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then it was, Dorado was the only one. And I was like, I didn't know if I could, you know, do and, what I know. And to put it in perspective, in. like, tell people, like, how prestigious this program that you were trying to get into uh, is. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're really good. They're <laughs> <laughs> it was, um, at the time, it was one of the top three drama schools um, in the world. Yeah. Well, now it's still, like, what, the top five? <laughs> yes. Top five, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's still pretty big. <laughs> still pretty big. Um, but it was um, it was interesting because I didn't. I remember I said, okay, well, I will apply to Rada, and you know, we'll see what happens. And again, kudos to my brother. It's like like he's really good at like being positive, you know, with me and supportive. Because I think I, I remember calling him, and I was like, I think I want to apply to this school. I said, but I'm just really not sure. And he said, well, why don't you just do it? <laughs> and oh. it's like, it's like his, his normal like demeanor, like, just do it. Like, it, like what do you, what's the problem? <laughs> and I said, well, I don't know if I'm going to get in. You know, I don't know if I'm going to have the money to get in. He was like, well, the most they're going to say is no. And then you just know what to do. And I was like, okay. I was like, all right, well, thanks. It was nice talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then, I hung up, and then like, we hung up. But it was, it was, it, you know, that really stuck to me because it was like the most that they're going to say is no. And then. And then if I'm not supposed to be there, I'm, I won't be there. Yeah. And so I was, I was after that talk and I was like, okay, well, I'm going to apply. I'm going to apply. I'm going to apply. And this was like in December. And I think the the deadline for it was February. And then I had to find like a, a teacher recommendation. And I was like, oh my God, I have to ask one of my teachers for recommendations. I'm not really sure if they feel like I'm ready for it. And I was, remember, I think I spoke to you about it mm -hmm. too. Yeah. About like getting a teacher, like, who should I ask? I don't know. Would they give it to me? Is it something that they do? I know. I know. We put like all this pressure on ourselves instead of just asking and exactly. they could just say no. <laughs> exactly. And so. Which they didn't. <laughs> I did. Exactly. At the end of the day, I asked, uh, I asked my second year teacher, uh, David Neuer to write me a recommendation because he was, because Second year is more of the time where you they where it's more work based and more yeah um, more technical theme, yeah, yeah more technical things and you're working on scenes and you're you know you're doing all these things so I I figured that the recommendation letter that they asked was either from a professional or a teacher that you know taught you um, more of um, more of the the works like more of the technical aspect of it as you said yeah. Um, and then, you know, he gave it to me and I was like, oh my God, he gave it to me. Great. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, I, then it was my turn. It was my turn to fill out the application. And I remember I was like, okay, Marguerite, you have to do this. This is it. All right, let's go. You know, I had, you know, a glass of wine and I was like, it was like an essay. Like, why do you think you should come to this school? And that was, I fill out everything else. And it was just that portion that I was having like a really difficult time with. Yeah. Because I didn't know if I should, you know, make it personal or if I should make it less personal, blah, blah, blah. So I just wrote exactly what was in my heart at the time. And then I sent, I made a prayer and I was like, God, Jesus, this is it. And I was like, <laughs> you know, go off with it. And I remember I printed it out. I posted it. I put it in a, an envelope. And then again, I prayed on it. And I was like, well, I'm going to either something's going to happen or something's not. And then we'll figure out what to do from there. And I put it in the post, and then, then that was it. And then they, and they uh, then they sent me an audition letter, and I was like, oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, I get to go audition for Rada, and I was like very shocked, and um, I didn't think that that you know that could have been me. Mm. And um, once I got that, I was like, I'm gonna go. <laughs> now this is when you're going this is like going from new york just booking a flight to audition yeah. there's no just to audition no guarantees or anything yeah to travel to london this is like your first time ever right no first time ever out of the country oh my god as, as opposed to like when i left my my own country to come to america but out of the country of america to go audition for a drama school in another country by myself, didn't know anyone. I don't yeah. have anyone there. I don't have like a, a umpteenth amount of money. Yeah. 
I think I got my tax return and I was like, I'm just booking a flight. <laughs> <laughs> and I just booked it. I was like, I'm doing this. This is it. That's all. That's and all. that was, and also I lost my phone too when I went over there. Oh no. Right before I, I left my phone, I think it, there was like water damage or, 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 um, or someone stole it or something. I just didn't have, I, I didn't have a phone when I went over there. Oh my God. And I was like, well, I'm just going to go because this is a once in a, that's like, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I am, I said, if I'm never ever leaving this country again, I am not going to give this up. Mm. That's like saying no, you know, like when you're given, when you're offered an opportunity, you either take it or you let it pass you by. Had I let that pass me by and sent in like a video audition or done a Skype audition, I probably wouldn't have went or got in. Mm. But I was like, I'm not going to let this opportunity go by. I'm not going to not go. Yeah. Like, I have an option to go. Like, I'll just get my stuff together and go because I might never have this chance again. Mm-hmm. And, like, so, I mean, what are the stakes, right? Like, they only accept how many people and, like, what's the probability? Like, how many people they bring to audition? Um, they had, I think they had a, a few hundred at the time, the, the MA program, um, it's, it was known, but it was definitely known more internationally, like other parts of Europe and also some, some, you know, in America too. Yeah. For the MA program. But, um, I think they had, they had thousands of submissions and they only accept 16 people in the program. Wow. Um, yeah, and I was like, oh, goodness. and and I remember going over there, and when I went, I saw there were two other girls. There was one girl and an, a guy in my group. We it was a group audition, mm. and um, and they both had, and the at that time the program had been running for two years prior to my 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 year my third year of like going to audition for, to become like a third year. Yeah, they have been. They were there for two years in a row like they auditioned two years like every year they've auditioned to get into this program wow and I was like and they were like and I thought they were really amazing yeah like I, you know <laughs> I was like oh my goodness like you know the girl like she knew her Shakespeare and it was it was flawless and it was impeccable and I, I at least I thought so <laughs> you know and um and the guy he was very he was very I forgot his name but he was very intense and he was not giving up and his foot bled throughout the audition the entire time his what? foot was bleeding. I was like, who's, I was like, who is bleeding in this room right now? And <laughs> nobody so is weird. stopping. <laughs> and he didn't stop. And it was, a, it was like an hour and a half audition in a group. And he it was, was towards determined. the end. He was determined, like not an ouch, not a peep, nothing. Like, <gasps> and I'm like running around the room. Like who is bleeding on this floor? That's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have been like, just because I'm bleeding doesn't mean that you're not gonna get me because I stop because I'm bleeding. No, it's because like it's there's something wrong with this floor. Yeah, know? that's what I thought. <laughs> but he was like on it, and he was like, nope. Um, wow. So so then you go to this audition, <clears throat> and it was like a process, right? They had you doing, you said like movement stuff, and yeah, it was. Um, I wish I remembered exactly. They're gonna be so. <laughs> at me right now um but I think it was uh it either had to have been a two or three day audition process wow um which is why we needed to I felt like I wanted to be there because or no 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 it was a three hour audition process mm. um and then there like there was like then there was like an op op there was like an option I think the next day to go and interview um, so it was a three hour audition process and then they do an interview with you like the next day. Um, and it was movement based. You had to memorize like a Shakespeare text and, a uh, classical, a classical piece and a modern piece. And, um, we were, it was basically a lot of movement and I loved it from like the moment I left the audition after three hours, it was grueling. Um, it was very physical, but I think god that at that time i was working out a lot before i didn't even know that was gonna help me out but <laughs> at that time i was like working out every I, I was working out five days a week wow i was like spinning um before and i went there and it was very like physical running up and down you know r running around the room and doing your text um while doing physical activities and mm. doing like different um That's fun. yeah it was it was fun but it was it was fun after. During, I was like, what is happening? I was, I felt like this was like, 
and I've never experienced that. Yeah. And they, you know, and you learn different things about yourself. And that's why I didn't regret it. And had I not, you know, if they didn't accept me, if somebody didn't drop out because they waitlisted me. Yeah. Um, so you went through this whole process. And then how long did you have to wait? Um, I went in May and then in June, yeah, was, they said I I on a wait list. Yeah. And, you know, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to wait. Well, like, hey, do like, you remember how many people were, like, auditioning with you? Because you said there was, like, thousands of people that, like, Yeah. Apply. For that for that group, it was – there was a group before me. Mm, so they probably before, had several or, groups. It was probably a yeah. couple hundred people. Yeah, definitely. And they, they had auditions um, two weekends. And that that's not even including the people who auditioned and who sent in things via Skype. Wow. Um. So – and then they only accept 16 like, people. Only 16 people. And then they probably need like, you know, so amount of women, so amount of men. Yeah. Exactly. So. They um I actually don't think so. I thought I thought that, but their statistics are like whoever they feel needs to be in it. So we oh, that's good. it wasn't um yeah. It wasn't an even number of like eight women and eight men. You know, I think maybe they w- would have thought that as well, but I think it's just who really, you know, who does like who should be in that program got it because it's a physical theater program so it's not um it doesn't really focus on acting like it's if people want to go and people tend to want to go to rada for the name of it mm-hmm. you know and so it's kind of like the esper studio where they kind of wean out the people who want to attend the school just to have it on their resume got it um and a lot you know i know the girl that i thought was really good i felt like you know i think she was really good in shakespeare and theater but i also felt that she was she wanted to go because she wanted the name on her resume. Yeah. Um, but um, so they, they figure it out by that way, by that instance. And I remember like after the audition, it was crazy and it was long and strenuous, but I lo- I felt so excited and rejuvenated. And I found something else in the acting that I don't think I would have ever found out had I not gone to the audition mm-hmm. that you can use your body because we were in class like all the time, sitting down, watching people, standing up, yeah. doing you know, blocking, blocking and doing our scene. And that's it. Not really, you know, and we did voice and speech and we did movement, but they it was never combined. It was always separate classes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they expect you to combine all of the things that you learn. But if you, nobody ever teaches you how to combine it, yeah. how can you learn? Like, that's how can you, true. how do you know? And so at that, for the audition, it was, you know, different parts of my body and different parts of my voice that I discovered because at a certain point when you're doing physical activity, it's, it, it numbs you so much that then you're still going that you forget, like you lose all inhibitions and it's like you are your natural self. Like you, your thoughts and your voice is coming out naturally mm. in the scene, in that monologue that you're doing, like different, you've discovered different things because you're not thinking about how you have to say this word or what inflection you must put on a, you know, on a certain phrase or, you know, your, like your objective is getting the word out there and getting that, that situation that, or that voice out there so people can understand it. And then when you're, you know, you have the imaginary circumstance and you're living it truthfully. And then you're also your body and your voice is free. It's just a magical experience. Wow. And then how did they or how did you learn like, oh, this is how to combine it? Because they just did it. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, you just got to combine them all right now. <laughs> yeah. It was just because it was the, the the exercise was, you know, we ran around. It was a lot of physical activity before we even started the monologue. It was a lot of getting out of your own head and got, getting out of your own way. Totally. You're running around and then like, you know, and then you, you, you're kind of creating it, it to, it's relatable to like a cast, uh, you know, that you're, you're on set with, or you're on stage with, you guys have to be in emotion together. You have to be able to play with other people and react off of other people, you know, whatever little things. So like we running, we're running around the room, you know, it's kind of like a stop and freeze game. You run around the room and you stop and then you do something else and then you change, you know, and then there was like the exercise that I remember vividly where you would run around, run around, run around. And then it was you would have to put yourself in a in a you have to do a statue, mm. and then um, so like the the instructor the tutor claps and then you're in a statue and then it becomes like okay we're doing statues it's called a statue activity uh, exercise and so you're doing statues and then but what happens is that 
you're so prone to being a statue and things that comfort you that, um, you know, you're not really off balance. You're in a statue that's comfortable for you. And you can try to, you know, say your words or say your monologue and, you know, at that point, but then it's still really stoic and it's really just what you always, what you planned from the beginning. So then the exercise continues and then the, the tutor claps again and he says, you know, uh, be, you know, you're, and you're a statue and then he claps again and then you're, you're, you unfreeze and you go somewhere else. And he says, you know, challenge yourself, challenge yourself, be unbalanced, put yourself in a different situation that's going to hurt your body. This is like the only time you're going to do this. Like do it, like do it, you know, challenge yourself is basically yeah. what you said. Yeah. And, and I, I think it's like helpful, right? Because then it's like, you're getting out of your head, you're getting out of like all those little habits that you just kind of like hold on to when you're just kind of feeling comfortable or like, Oh, I don't know where, I, you know, I don't know these people or whatever. Cause yeah. you're just so just like, you're trying to be pretty. You're trying to make sure it's, and you know, I think it's not about being pretty, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like, I, and I think that's also something that we, You know, if you want to be a real performer and an actor and an artist, it's not about being pretty. That can be all done with makeup and great photographers, great lighting. Mm -hmm. If you want to be an artist, it's about being raw and truthful. Mm -hmm. That's what people relate to. Yes. That's what, you know, they made us experience in those three hours. That's what I experienced. Like, it's not about me trying to be like all my tippy toes, trying to be cute and trying to, you know, be like a little ballerina, maybe one foot up, try to do a yoga pose like that I know that I could do. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, it was just about, you know, being on trying to do a handstand on one hand with all my body weight on one hand. And yeah. that and then in that moment, you know, and things that they the tutor like did it so often, so often. And then eventually with each person, once he saw that the person was in a statue that was challenging for them, he would say, say your monologue now. Do it now. And then. And also what happens is that the rest of the room has to stay in their statue while this person is saying their monologue in that statue. Mm. Um, and then, you know, and you, you, you say your, you say your monologue through the circumstance that you're in right now, through your pain, through your, your hurt or through your, uh, your anger. And it comes out completely different than what you thought was going to happen. Cause yeah. you, you, I worked on it with David so many times. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So you had coached with that monologue prior to going and then like it was coming out completely different, completely different. And it was it felt really good because I was able to see. You know what that character was going through and it was like Helena in a Midsummer's Night Dream and it was when she like when she was like in the forest, I I I, I don't know why I forget the scene, but she was um she was, she was like in the forest and she was talking and it was, I thought it was going to be like a pretty, you know, pretty monologue, great monologue. I was able to get like the points and the inflections and everything. And I got the circumstance, but I never did it through being unbalanced Mm -hmm. and fighting through that and letting my voice go through. And I remember like one of the, you know, the course director too, he was like, challenge yourself, Marguerite, challenge yourself. (laughs) And, you know, and it was good to hear that because then it's kind of like, in my mind, I'm like, I'm challenging myself. But really, I probably, you know, I really wasn't. You know, mm. I thought I was, but I really wasn't because I was comfortable in the, you know, the, the situations and the poses that, and the statues that I was in. And once I was very uncomfortable and it looked really hard, he did come to me and said, say it now. Do it now. Start again. Do it now. Start again. And it was just like, it was a really good experience. And I was like, if I don't get into this program, I am so happy and so appreciative that I experienced this because I know that my work can be this raw and truthful at one point and it can continue to to be that way because I felt it. Yeah. I know like this is what I have to feel. This is what I feel when I know I'm being raw and truthful. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I have to aim to get towards. So that's good. It's like, so, I told him, I was like, I don't care if I don't get in the interview. I was like, um, you know, I, I would love to get, I would love to experience this, but I am just grateful and appreciative that I even got to do three hours of this. Like maybe in a, maybe if I'm not ready now, maybe in two years, I'll be ready, you know, for what you guys are looking for. I'm not really sure. Yeah. But I just, I appreciated it. And I was just completely honest. Like, I was blown away. I was like, thank God wow. you know, <laughs> to experience this. <laughs> 
I'm going to just go so I could get the audition process. I, know. <laughs> I think everybody should go. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. So then, like, so then you go through, so then you get waitlisted, but then, like, a month later, you mm-hmm. found out that you're accepted into the program. Like, yeah. I'm like, ah, I couldn't believe it. Like, I, <laughs> I got to get people email? out of <laughs> one of 16 out of like a thousands yeah. of people. Like, and this is obviously one of the most notable like acting schools. I mean, William Esper is also one of the top 25 acting schools yeah. um, in the world. But I mean, when you say RADA, people just like, Ooh, Rada. you know it's just like <laughs> you know like you're just about to blow some smoke in their face or something <laughs> yeah it's like it's definitely it's up there with like Yale you know like all these yeah. um really big Ivy League schools so what was that process of like going to you know Esper to your conservatory which was awesome you know which was great in its own right and mm-hmm. then going into this. Now, I know you said there were different processes and different things that you learned. But what were, like, the main things that you're, like, I guess took away from that you went from RADA that you you weren't able to get at um, Esper? Or maybe it enhanced it. Yeah, it was it was the performance a- aspect of it. Definitely mm-hmm. the top one was the fact that every module we had to... Uh, you know, it wasn't in front of an audience, but it, it wasn't in front of like a, a massive amount of people that we didn't know. It was in front of other tutors that we were working with. Yeah. But the fact that we had to perform all the time and, you know, it was great. And then towards the end, we devised and we, we wrote the piece um, that we performed. And it was like a seven day performance. It was like a full production with lighting, costumes, makeup. It was a full, a full on performance and production that I needed to feel confident in going into any audition, any project. I'm, I am now confident in going into those aspects of the work. Yeah. Um, you know, being comfortable mm-hmm. because I didn't have that before. I was very nervous. Like I was like, you know, you always get that nervous, you know, feeling either, you know, once the camera starts rolling or like, if you have to go on stage, it's always going to be there, which is, I think a good piece of, you know, being human. Yeah. I think once that nervousness goes away, then you should kind of think about it. <laughs> like, is this really what, you know, you feels good for you? But um, but the performance definitely, the performance aspect got me to do it. And the fact that it was repetitive. So it made me, it, I took away that that's when it becomes a craft. Because I have to do a show every night. Sometimes we have two day shows, um, two shows a day. Um, and I think it was probably twice, maybe we had two shows a day and we had to, you know, you have to go on and do the character. And of course you find different things out, but, um, having consistency in your character, that's how it made me realize that you have to, you know, you can always discover more about your character, but you have to have a base and a huge, uh, what is that? Um, a huge base and a, a really big guy like um a stable base of who your character is before going on stage Mm -hmm. um or on or on camera because you can just want to make sure your character's full exactly like you have an idea you know who this person is you know Mm -hmm. who you are in your character um because if you don't then every you know performance will be different but that's you know that's kind of good in some aspects but you're not training anymore you're giving somebody a show you're, you're doing something that is written something that has to go a certain way that has to you know have an arc it's a story and you're you're a storyteller so you have to have a a a base that's consistent yeah um so that it taught me that and it taught me a lot about also different aspects of you know the craft and methods and the methods as well like I still you know stand by the Meisner technique but I've never I would never was able to use it you know, with other people in production. So I learned this technique and it's great and I know what works for me, but how then do I use it with um, mm-hmm. another actor, like on scene or like uh, on, on a set or on stage? Um, so it was great <clears throat> to be able to know that there are different, um, there were different like theaters and like um, like Peter Brook had his own theater base and 
um, and you know Shakespeare, of course, with the classics, and we have like Brecht, who also has his own kind of theater base, and Meyerhold, who also has his own um, way of working in his own theater um, theater method as well. That's more movement based, and so um, having all of these, having the background, and being able to see how I can implement it whenever I need it or however I would need it to make a character fuller, to make my choices better. Yeah. Um, that's really, really what I took away from, from working there. And also like the tutors were amazing. Yeah. You had like personal tutors that you would a- were able to like go to, to like work out the scenes and stuff, like which is, I mean, that's just amazing. Yeah. It was like, it was great. And, and, you know, and my classmates were great and we're like, we, we literally are a company. And I think no matter where we go, if we ever, um, if we ever want to work together again or have the opportunity to, I know, you know, we will, it was difficult having 16 individuals and, you know, different minds and different personalities from all different parts of the world come to create one piece. It was, it was a process. There are some people who were, you know, more vocal than others and felt a certain kind of way. But at the end of the day, we created a project that, you know, we were able to act out for, you know, seven to nine shows and, um, and it was a full story and we had a great, you know, writer, Joshua Sabo was, um, our, our, he was like, basically we're co-writing with him, the idea of like the raft of the Medusa. And then our, our, the di- course director, Andrew Visnefsky, he was the, he directed us along with like Cara Nolan and, and Jeff Williams was, uh, they were doing the directing program at RADA and they were all great. So it was really good working with them and being able to have this like this kind of this family that are that is all encompassing of the same goal which is storytelling and being honest about it and being raw and truthful about it it was it's really was a really great process and it's something that I will cherish like for the rest of my entire life (laughs) that's amazing so then you come off this amazing high of an experience you're like you know you and the program was what like 18 months um, it was a year. Okay, it was one year. Yeah, it was a year. And um, and then and then so you stay in London. You go to New York. You're like, I'm ready to take on this industry. You know, I'm bad, and I'm gonna mm. let everyone know it. <laughs> like, <what? laughs> I wish. I feel like that's happened. how I would feel. I'd be oh like, goodness. like no, cruising through. <laughs> I wish that's what happened. I came. I came. Back, back to America earlier than I expected. So I was I was hoping to come back with the a- attitude that you exactly mentioned. Yeah, and I was like, you know, like if I if I came on the time that I wanted to come back, I think I would have been, you know, much more prepared, much more confident in in what I can provide and what I can do and what I just came from, you know, learning, like you just said. But that did not happen at all. <laughs> <laughs> That did not. I came back earlier than expected, even though I had like uh, two months, you know, remaining on my visa. I came back. I wanted to come back when my visa was expiring. But uh-huh. I came back earlier than expected. And um, and so it was I was thrown into the I felt the wilderness of New York City, mm. especially for the acting. Yeah, it was something. It's something else over here. <laughs> <laughs> it's something else. And then, so, so what was your way of then like transitioning back? Because I mean, you're, so now it's like trying to figure out, you know, it's like, like we were talking about earlier, you know, it's like, okay, you know, you go, you do all this amazing programming and then they did, they did have a showcase for you guys. So it wasn't like, so there was something that they, they provided for you, like in New York through the RADA Uh, program. I think I that was actually the first year that that happened. And I, I, I believe it, um, you know, um, I somebody else can correct me if I'm wrong, like from like the Rada, you know, the Rada world. But I believe it was the first year that they invited the MA lab to do the showcase that Rada has in New York. Got it. Um, so I, and I was. I, of course, I'm extremely grateful and I loved it. And I was like, this is great because similar to when we left Esper, it was that thing of, okay, I'm now, I've now left my sacred place of being an artist yeah. of school. 
mm-hmm. my safe zone and I'm in the wilderness of the professional world and I don't know what to do and I don't know anybody and I just went to this great through this great program that I learned so much about myself and so much about the theater world and so much about acting and the arts but what am I supposed to do with all that knowledge and how can I go about it and so I think it was it was the best thing in my entire lifetime Mm -hmm. again that I was able to that you know this was everything fell into place I would say like you know, God put everything into place. Like this was the first year that this happened. And I was grateful that I, you know, I was in this year and I was able to do it. I don't know if they continue doing it. I don't know if that was the first and last year they did it. But the fact that I was able to do a showcase with the, you know, rest of the the RADA uh, kids uh, that did the, the BA program in New York, it, it was a great segue and I felt really good after a month of coming into, coming from London back yeah. to New York thrown into the acting industry here, which mm-hmm. is a different, a different ball game. Yeah. Yeah. Was- and so, so what is like the now, you know, like transitioning. And I mean, obviously like, you know, it's just like, you have to deal with regular life trying to like have like that financial support, but then it's like, okay, so how do you like balance that all retain all of that knowledge and all of that amazingness that you have taken and mm-hmm. and now use that and incorporate that into trying to get you know get your career to that next level you know yeah, show. yeah. let's see um it it's i'm definitely more i'm definitely used to new york life again uh-huh. I speak very fast, like the American, and, <laughs> <laughs> um, and everything is, you know, moving fast. And I, I'm up to speed as well, so I can understand the cast and directors, and you know, their quick turnover and everything. That pace now is something that's uh, very, it's like known to me, and I can understand it. And so I'm on it with them. Um, in terms of, it's like it's, in terms of finances, it's 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 back to I kind of feel like I'm back in a similar situation where I'm working just so I can support um, my investment in myself. Mm. Um, so it is. Um, it's it's not it's not ideal, but I, I feel that this is just what um, this is where I am. Yeah. I don't want to say it's normal for everyone. I don't. I don't want it to be normal for everyone. I don't think it should be that way. I think we should have the opportunity to, you know, to be performing artists in all kinds of fields and not feel that we have to work three jobs just to support what we really want to do. Yeah. But, and you know what, but I think that, you know, it's like, of course, like if you're someone that doesn't have to work, um, you can just fully be supported either by family or whoever, to just focus solely on your career. I mean, like, that's amazing. And you need to really take advantage of that. But like, there's also the reality that there are very many people just like you, who need to work, you know, one, two, you know, different jobs, just so that they can, um, so that they can pay for those headshots, so that they can then pay for those casting workshops, so that that they can then be seen. And then that Mm -hmm. hopefully, then they can audition. So it's just like, I think it's, it's like, yes, you hope that not everyone goes through it, but it is a very real situation that yeah. happens, you know? So, mm. so I think it's, I think for me, I, I think it's, it's uh healthy to know. It's just like that there are other people like you out there, you know? Mm-hmm. And yeah. if you're not like that and you're fortunate not to have that, then don't take it for granted, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I know I've, I've run into a few people who, are not in the situation and they often take it for granted or what they do is they want to make it more difficult for themselves. And I'm just like, I don't understand why you want it to be a struggle for you to be an artist. You don't have to be a starving artist if you don't have to be a starving artist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, that, that blows my mind. In, in like how are they making it more difficult for themselves? They just feel like, you know, they don't want to, you know, take the advantage their of family supports them. They don't want to take their family's money or they don't. It's just, it, it's like, this is not an easy career. And I, I get there must be something. I've never been in that situation where, you know, I'm having 
oppor- like opportunities, financial opportunities or money thrown at me. Yeah. So I don't know what that feels like yeah. at this point. I would say this will happen one day in my lifetime. It um, will. <laughs> it's happening. Um, it's manifesting right this second. Exactly. I, I receive it in the name of Jesus. Um, so, um, so, you know, but they, they have, and so for them, it's, it's a, it's a norm. And so they're upset that they can't do something by themselves. They want to do it by themselves. You can do it by yourself, but if you have the opportunity to have the help and the support, you shouldn't throw that away. Yeah, totally. Like, don't, don't go out of your way to prove like, I'm gonna do this all by myself. That's, just because I ran to a few people who are like that. <laughs> If your mom and your dad are like, we're going to give you money, we're going to, you know, you can do all the acting classes and headshots that you want. Take it. Take it now. Take it all. Yeah. And then you can pay them back when you do it by yourself. That's okay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think that's it. I don't know. Is there anything that you want to share or like feel like, you know, you wanted to touch on or or like, you know, if there's someone else that's like just getting out of school or people that are like interested in like figuring out training or something. Yeah, I would say to them um, that, uh, you know, not to definitely not to give up and that it is a um, it's a long haul. And I think that's one of the things that you and I have often spoken about as well. It's just realizing that this career is not there can be goals and there can be deadlines for you. You know, you could say, Hey, I want to be in that, you know, I want to be this by, by the time of 30. But when you realize that a career is not just about time limits and it's about uh, developing, I think you can, you can realize that, okay, you know, acting it's, it's a career and it's a long haul process. And, you know, some people, some people who have been doing it or you see as a, overnight success it's not they're not overnight successes they've been working on it for years 10 12 years Mm -hmm. and you know and then it's just that this role happened to be the one that you know allowed them to get a little bit um more exposure and that's it and so it's just you know don't give up on yourself don't assume that it's uh, a short process and that you can you know in two years you know be the best you know get like 15 oscar nominations or something (laughs) just you know be realistic and be, you know, supportive of yourself and positive about your, you know, about yourself and your circumstance and it'll be good. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Marguerite Gennard. Um, If you want to find out more information about her or ask her more about applying to some of these prestigious programs that she had mentioned, uh, make sure to follow her or tweet at her. Um, on Twitter at Marge X, and that's M A R G E A C T S. Marge X, get it? Haha, <laughs> she acts. Okay, cool. All right, and um, if there's any other information, comments, um, critiques, anything that you guys want to talk to me about, check out the website www.risetriumph.com, and um, there's a section there where you can comment on each of the episodes or you can email me and tell me or if there's any suggestions or people that you want to speak with or if you want to recommend that I speak with someone specifically please direct them to me okay um and I'll see you guys on the next one have a great day